Holy hole in a donut, Batman. We're buying a campground. Welcome back to the RV Odd Couple. My name is John. And I'm Mercedes. And long story short, we sold most of our possessions in pursuit of freedom, independence, and adventure. Because life is so short, you guys. Holy moly. And we are in quite the adventure. So we got to <laughs> tell you the story and the way this has all been unfolding. Because you guys know we've been talking about land and what we're looking for. And it's really been a journey to finding this piece of property. And, and we want to share with you guys our vision. And we also really want to share with you guys if you're interested in like i don't know having a spot to park your rv like what that looks like <laughs> as you guys know the camping industry is exploding there's 1.1 million new rvers coming in this year and, and like only forty thousand new campsites or something yeah I, I read it somewhere in like rv park association owners association it was just a ridiculously low number in comparison to who's coming in yeah and we, being that we have the rv odd squad we get emails all the time of people that can't find campgrounds mm -hmm. there's no vacancy yeah. we have a close friend jason and amy yeah who just bought a piece of land to you know rv on in utah but they got there and they literally can't find a campground to stay in while they're renovating the land getting it ready right and so they're forced to stay inside an uh, airbnb when they have a perfectly functional rv that would work if they could only find hookups if they could only find hookups or, or our other friend from colorado traveled to ohio found the rv of his dreams on his way back <laughs> he seriously had to stay in a hotel every single night and on the way back his rv in the hotel parking lot because there was no space there was no space available guys and so this is a huge problem it's a huge huge problem um we haven't really stayed in a lot of thousand trails parks you guys know we're members we're responsible for selling hundreds of memberships yeah and we feel a responsibility to stay out of the parks because we know they're overflowing and we can afford to find we new can places. afford to find yeah. other places so we kind of stay out of those parks to let the the newbie RVers and people that trusted us enough to buy a membership give them the space and not take up the space yeah as you guys may know we launched a video about a month ago called RV land yeah and that whole process was eye-opening because mm -hmm. developing raw land into a campground can take three four years with regulations zonings we were blown away by how much work actually needs to be done to open a campground so then we started sliding over into actually buying an existing campground and believe it or not there's not very many available in the united states I've been watching all the campgrounds, all the raw land, all over the United States. And interestingly enough, the next day after we created the video, the first video for buying RV land, a new place came available on Zillow the very next day. So I started looking at it and it was a campground that had opened in 1970, which we got a little bit of background to that, which is interesting. But it closed about three years ago because it was an older couple that couldn't, they just couldn't keep up with the improvements, with the the maintenance of the park so that and they got older and so they ended up letting the campground somewhat die and so we've got this beautiful place called Thunder Canyon that we found and we started actually doing research now I am extremely obsessive and I've been on this project for two weeks now you may notice that my voice I sound a little sick it's because I've been talking on the phone and going crazy trying to figure out how we can make this work we can't do this by ourselves yeah but here's what we found and here's what's so special about it because the the raw land is going to take like forever to develop right existing rv parks are like only millions of dollars right <laughs> that's it and 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 you know we don't have millions of dollars although i i really believe that one day we will but and we, what's we don't what's funny is a lot of you guys think we're rich youtubers we're yeah. not yeah we don't have seven hundred fifty thousand dollars to buy a campground but or the money to improve it but if you think about it and if you take the number of units and you divide it out by the total now that's doable and it that kind of got us thinking and it kind of got us started on this on on this journey right so we beg you please share this please like please comment we need all of your help to make sure that this video gets in front of the right people this place feels like a 1970s campground it does and and to be quite frank we've been praying throughout this entire process every morning and every day we've been praying on this campground and we really truly believe that we're being led 
a lot of you guys don't know that when we started this YouTube channel, we thought we were just going to make a few extra bucks on the road, right? Pay our gas money. Pay our gas money, <laughs> pay our campsites. We never imagined that it would have turned into this. And, yeah. and now we actually feel a responsibility to the RV Odd Squad, the community that we built. We think it's the best community out there. Mercedes and I feel a responsibility to our viewers mm -hmm. to, you know, to, to, to make a change. Things are absolutely upside down in our country right now. Mm -hmm. And I remember a time back in the 70s when I was a Cub Scout and then when I was a Boy Scout, right? It was just different times. Campgrounds used to feel a lot different then than they do now. Yeah, apparently the dirty dancing days were like real. <laughs> Nobody puts baby in a corner. <laughs> it's true. Campground used to be a place of, you know, families and unity and, and doing plays and having events for the kids and, and activities. Lots of activities <laughs> to do, right? And then they still do some of that at Yogi Bear camp Campgrounds, which and some we just, of them. Yeah, it's actually Sage's new favorite campground. We want to be part of a community that has certain values, right? People Judeo that believe. Christian values. Yeah, GDO. Judy. <laughs> Judeo. <laughs> what she said. Okay, just everything is kind of messed up right now and we would love to be part of the solution, not part of the problem. These are things that I've been thinking about for months. What does it mean to be an RV Odd Squad member? And I think because we're so authentic and real, I think we've attracted the same type of people that think a lot like we do, that, that have the same type of values that we have. And that led me down the hole into the Boy Scout promise, duty to God and country, duty to other people duty to self. I used to remember all these. I actually had to remember all these things to become a Boy Scout. The Boy Scout motto, the Boy Scout law, and most importantly when it comes to camping, the outdoor code. These are all things that are, were built by what we used to be an amazing institution in America. You'd be blown away by how many presidents and leaders of Fortune 500 companies were Boy Scouts. You know, did you know that Martin Luther King was a Boy Scout? Did you know that Colin Powell was a Boy Scout? It's sad what's happening to the Boy Scouts of America. It's another great institution that's slowly dying and maybe we have an opportunity to bring it back. I want to bring these principles back to the RV Odd Squad and be part of the solution. And don't worry, ladies. This isn't a boys only kind of thing. Masculinity is having like a <laughs> crisis right now, what with man buns and it all these is. crazy things. But yeah. this is more about like principles in general and about if things really do go sideways or more sideways than they already are and things really hit the fan, who are your neighbors gonna be? Right. And I think what really excites me about this campground specifically is that because it had been closed the last three years, does it need TLC? Yeah. Oh yeah. You know, but What's really exciting is that there's a lot of land included and this was priced only as land. It would, did not include the, the infrastructure yeah. that's already existing. Yeah. And this so- 226 acres of land, guys. So the vision long-term that I see is twofold. It's definitely a piece about community and, and a certain type of community. And being in Alabama, I don't think that's gonna be a problem, but it's close enough to other states too. It's in a really good location. But also I see that it could generate revenue once the campground portion is up and running again. Exactly. And that's what's really exciting to me is that there are a lot of options. And for that reason, John and I are kind of taking all of our plans and throwing them out the window. And in like two days, we're gonna be in Alabama so that we can look at this land in We got in 10 person. days to do our due diligence on this land. We both were shocked when it got accepted. We threw an offer out there. There, there were, were other, offers. There were other offers, but we did write a note to the owners letting them know what, our, what we Idea wanted to was. do with it, what are the principles. So the first thing I figured out after about a month of research is that we wanted to buy a campground in the Red State, guys. Um, Shocker. Alabama is one of the last great states where you can actually have freedom to do what you want with your land. So we threw this offer out on a wing and a prayer, guys. Yeah. And multiple bids. Multiple offers, and we really didn't think we had a shot because yeah. we couldn't prove the funds right away. Yeah. And so we threw our offer out there and we prayed to God, and if it was God's will, it would be done, right? And that's kind of the way our <laughs> whole adventure has been. We trust that God is gonna put the right people in our lives at the right moment and the right opportunities. And then we do what we can to help as many people as we can. So we had to wait two days. It was excruciating. We got a phone call saying that we had won the bidding process. And so they had accepted our offer. We were in shock. And at that point, Mercedes was happy and scared 
And I was exhilarated and terrified because now we knew what we were looking at. And what we were looking at is that we got to get our butts out to Alabama and do our due diligence to find out if this thing is really viable. How messed up is this place? What's it going to cost to get it open? Mm -hmm. Are the roads okay? Mm -hmm. You know, what parts of this property are in flood zones? So all this stuff is stuff that we've got to work on. And we've actually got a team already starting to do the work. Yeah. And we're packing up the rig and getting ready to go. Well, that's the exciting thing too, is that we're not doing this alone. No. And you guys know that John and I, I mean, we do some pretty genius things every now and then, but um, we've also done some dumb things, so don't worry. It's not just us working on this. <laughs> we have um, an attorney, RV Odd Squad member, solid person, uh, 36 years experience as an attorney that's, that's really guiding us through this. Um, obviously, we have a realtor, et cetera, but we also have some, some business leaders. We have a lot of connections within the RV industry, people that look at us young bucks and they give us some advice. Yeah, we're looking at escrow companies. We're yeah. looking at title companies. How are we going to do party, this? Yeah. yeah, and so we're looking for partners. Yeah, third parties that are handling funds and those sorts of things and, and really just making sure that A, this is doable and B, like if people are interested, how can we find a way to really get that organized? because I think there's different levels of interest there's some people that you know they have some time available and they'd like to help but then there's other people that really want ownership and they really want decision-making abilities they they want to like steer the ship and so what we're doing is we're trying to organize everybody that's interested into three categories people that just want to site <laughs> like their own site people that want to be like owners you know like like steer the ship and then people that say you know maybe I can't buy land at this moment but I'd really like to you know donate my time and, and see how I can contribute in other ways with my talents or my time yeah we are trusting that God's gonna let this thing lay out exactly the way it's supposed to go we're gonna go and bust our butts do as much work as we possibly can and we're gonna leave the rest to God guys and so yeah. we don't know if it's gonna be 30 members at 30k or if we've got some heavy hitters that can come in and back us in our vision on opening the campground that we would absolutely love to be a part of. Mm -hmm. The most important part to us is that the board, whoever comes in and joins and becomes our partners, are going to help us decide how this thing is going to function, what yeah. the rules are. There's going to be rules, guys. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's just common sense with principles and it's it's so, I'm so excited about this so that our viewers can have a safe spot right and so it's called Thunder Canyon Mercedes and I want to make it Thunder Canyon Camp Gratitude right and that's kind of what we'd like to do because we're so grateful for the mm -hmm. lives that we've been blessed with the RV Odd Squad has been an incredible blessing to us mm -hmm. we'd love to partner with all as many of you as we possibly can yeah. but the most important thing is we take a little stress and pressure off the system to make room for new RVers I yeah. really am afraid that a lot of new RVers are going to come in and hate the lifestyle because they're going to buy this, you know, 60, 70, 80,000, two, three, four hundred thousand dollar rig and they're not going to be able to go out and use it. Mm -hmm. We can't get any Yellowstone. We can't get any Utah right now. Goodbye, BLM land. It's, it's slowly, yeah. surely leaving. And they're already starting to close BLM, BLM land and they're making excuses as to why they're closing it. And you can't camp out a bunch of Cabela's anymore. I mean, things are getting really, really tricky. And, and Arvine and, and the Boy Scouts and masculinity it's all dying and it's we all just dying want to bring fast, it back we just want to save at least some <laughs> institutions or create new ones yeah you know what i mean and and, and have a positive effect on um, america and hopefully get more of us together that believe the same way and then if we can make this campground work actually work really well and profitable mm -hmm. maybe we can leverage that and start opening other campgrounds around mm -hmm. the country with the same types of principles now i'm the big thinker mercedes gets terrified when i talk like that could we do it i think anything is possible with yeah. god no. anything is possible with i god. agree and i think big too he makes it think like i think small no, no. it's that i think details the pieces i i see the pieces right. and so the first piece is that we need to get organized on who wants to contribute and in what way? Who wants to be an owner? Who just wants to hang out? Who just wants to know? So what we're doing is we're collecting the email so that we can email you more on like the flood zone map and those sorts of things if you're actually really interested, right? Yeah, yeah. And ultimately, guys, we'd actually love to have just three or four people. The more people involved make it a little bit tricky more to get opinions. things done. Yeah. But we're open-minded to whatever the God's will is in this whole thing. So mm -hmm. we'll take whatever we can get. We've got 10 days to do our due diligence and show that we have 
the money. Mm -hmm. And right? we're working on that. And we're working on that. <laughs> Ask and you shall find. We're going to see. Yeah, and what's funny is this is really all my fault because when I started noticing that John was like obsessing and like staying up late at night, you'd think he was doing something nefarious. He's like looking at properties online, right? Yeah, and, and the Boy like, Scout oath. Yeah, I know. The, what it's are like, the principles of this thing going to be? His search history is Whether well, he's an RV Odd Squad member. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but. But the point being is like I saw him obsessing and I know like when I see him like that it's like okay we're going to get a curveball in life today okay all the plans Buckle up. all the plans that I had for like what Q3 and Q4 of 2021 <laughs> look like they're all going out the window just go along for the ride but I'm actually excited about this I actually see the viability in it because there's so much additional land that I see the opportunity for further development where it's not just people having a place to stay that you buy a property and you stay on the property. It can also be a revenue generating property and that gets me excited. Let's talk a little bit about the land. So it's 226 ac acres in Eider, Alabama. It actually has two creeks that run through and come to a tributary in the center of the land. Very cool. The land right now is broken into three parcels, one 120 acre parcel that's on the other side of the river that's completely not developed. Yeah. And then there's two parcels on the other side of the stream that is where the campground, the old campground used to lay. There's several cabins there. There's mm -hmm. actually an old restaurant there. Mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a swimming pool. And if you look at the photos, it looks like it's a mess. There's, and it looks a little small. Maybe we need we some could, elbow grease. Yeah, we'll need some elbow <laughs> grease. You know, but one of the coolest things about this property is it's not an incorporated county. It actually, the driveway starts right at the end of incorporated Ida, Alabama. Yeah, and there's no building department, there's so no John's building department, happy. No, but that still doesn't mean, we still, one of our biggest tasks when we get there is to meet with the commissioner of yeah. the county and find out if we're gonna get the support we need. If they, Do they want a campground there? Do they want a campground there? We wanna to talk to the neighbors, see if it, you know if we're gonna get any pushback. Yeah, because now, they might not want that. And Alabama is one of the last great states for actually being able to do what you want with land. And because my idea thing is going off and I've got all this vision, how cool would it be to actually have a training center for RVers because of those cabins that we have there. I drive Mercedes crazy, right? But how cool if we could have the RV Odd Squad proving grounds, right? Training, newbie training People grounds. People could fly into Chattanooga, we could pick them up at the airport, they can stay in a cabin, and we can train a handful of people on how to RV. Okay. We can have different types of RVs there, we can actually build a track that, you know, where they can drive around and learn how to drive a fifth wheel or a class A. <laughs> RV, well, okay, I know how he teaches people to drive RVs. <laughs> so it would be an RV boot camp, and it'd be like, pick up that dog poop drive stop <laughs> go fast so fast but the funniest thing is, is i brought these ideas up to mercedes she actually liked it you guys know bit. we do a Just newbie a class bit. once a month yeah could you imagine doing you know? it out there and that's getting around 15 16 000 views per month of yeah. newbie rvers that are coming Just in taking and, notes yeah and we can teach about integrity we can teach about the etiquette of campground there's no rv school we can t we can help people learn how to buy before they make the big mistakes that a lot of rvers make we can teach you what not to do. We can It'll teach you what not to do. Just watch our videos. You'll <laughs> learn what not to do. So we are so blessed. This is incredible. I'm and, the luckiest man on the planet. And this is scary, guys. This is a little bit scary. But you know what? If it don't scare you a little bit, you ain't thinking big enough. We're going to leave a link below this video. Go ahead and click that link. We've got an opt-in form. We're trying to figure out who's interested, who's and not in interested. In what way interested? We've got a bunch of boxes that you can check. If you're big money and you really want to help us actually hit the vision that we want to hit, we'd love to hear from you as well. And uh, we are on our way to Alabama, guys. We're gonna keep you updated on everything happening, including our insane trip across country. We're gonna keep you updated with what the property looks like. Go take lots of footage We're of it. We're gonna get the drone up, shoot over the top. We're gonna run her down the river. We're gonna do We're have gonna electricians do come out, plumbers come out. We're gonna have septic guys come out, see what's working, what's not. It's gonna be an adventure. We're gonna get a good idea of what it's gonna cost to get those 30 sites working right away. What it's gonna take to renovate those cabins and it's gonna yeah it's gonna be one heck of an adventure we're gonna keep you guys in the know as we go we will be on the rv show usa channel this wednesday check us out there we're gonna be talking more about it 
We should actually know a lot more by Wednesday. We should be in Ida, Alabama by that time. We'll have a good idea of where you guys are, how many people want to jump in, and you know how much of a portion of ownership do you want to have. And we also plan on going live next week as well when we get to the campground, so we'll look for that. Life is too short not to live it, guys. It's true. We'll see you in the next video.